Tegger. It's Lynette, Life With Us TV. Take a seat, because we need to talk. Girl, it has been six weeks. One, two, three, four, five, six weeks. I'm about to give you the nitty gritty. I'm gonna give you the details, and I am going to give you some tips and tricks to get through this hysterectomy surgery. If I can make it through, so can you. Let's get started. So let me go ahead and backtrack for you real quick. When I got up from the surgery table, I immediately was greeted with the news that your total laparoscopic hysterectomy had to be modified. It was a chance that that was gonna happen and it did happen. So I woke up to a cesarean cut. So my immediate thing was I knew that they were gonna try to keep me overnight. So the nurse was asking, you know, what is your pain level? And honestly, it was like a three or four then. And she said, for you to say a three or four, we're gonna keep monitoring you to see if it goes a little higher. If it goes higher than maybe a six, we're going to admit you. Cool, that's what I want you to do because I don't wanna be at home in pain. My pain level never really increased. So they decided that they were gonna go ahead and send me home. I came home, as you can see in the videos that I posted previously, and I had all of the essentials available to me to just relax and get through those most critical days, which I consider the most critical days now for me was day one through three. I learned later that my uterus wore five pounds. Yeah, I have those pictures. I'm not going to share those pictures with you because they're quite graphic. First thing you're going to need to do is you're gonna to have to purchase some essentials. I purchased a buttload of stuff, a buttload of stuff that I didn't need. So my advice to you is if you're an Amazon Prime member, order the stuff that you think you're going to need the week of surgery. That way, while you're recovering, you can use what you need to use and you're able to send back those things that aren't doing you any good. So that's tip number one. Tip number two, let me go ahead and tell you what does work. This is from the grocery store. Plum Smart Juice. This juice right here is going to loosen everything up after that anesthesia has clogged everything up. This is very good. When I tell you that it was a lifesaver of getting things to flow, combine that with some grapes. I had green grapes and them two together. I was having my BMs within day two. Next thing, Alka-Seltzer tablets. What you think these are going to be for is not what they're for. It's not indigestive gas that you're worried about. It's that O2 gas that they pump in your belly to blow it up when you're having laparoscopic surgery. It don't all dissipate. It gets trapped, it travels, and it usually settles right up in here. The next so, thing, peppermint tea was essential and helping with that gas as well. If you get all three, all three of these things together, you're gonna get that stuff moving. What I did was I combined this tea with a lemon tea because I don't like the taste of peppermint. Mix them together, it was so good, y'all. Next thing, and this will not come into play until probably about week three to four chafing cream. I'm only suggesting this if you absolutely need it. And the people that's going to need something like this are people that have natural folds in their skin. Like I have a large belly. I had a large belly before the hysterectomy. Now it's a deflated large belly. And until I get it toned up, I'm chafing. And the chafing hurts so bad. So I called the doctor and he said, get some athlete's foot spray, but the spray nozzle on these are so strong that it hurts. So what I did was I went to the store and I found some type of anti-itch cream and I used that right down in that C-section area where I have that fold at, but only do this after you have been cleared to do so. After everything has scabbed over and healed over, then you can start using things like that in that area. But until then, you're just gonna have to kind of deal with it. The next thing that aided me, Tylenol liquid caps. This was recommended to me by the nurse that was taking care of me. She said, get the liquid gels. The liquid gels go into your system like that and you'll be able to feel the effects of it so much faster. A belly band. If you have an HSA or HRA account, 
this qualifies as a medical purchase so you can purchase those out of your health savings accounts as well. If you don't need the belly band for anything else, you're going to need it for a car ride. That car ride home from the hospital tore me up. So whenever I had to get into a vehicle, I will put the belly band on. As you can see in this clip right here, we were getting ready to head out and go to dinner. And I had to put the belly band on to keep everything nice, tight, secure. I don't know if you will have this issue, but for a while, I felt like my organs were trying to settle back in position. And I know it sounds weird, but it happens. I felt like my organs were sloshing around and it was borderline nauseating. If I would turn over from left to right, it would go. That's how my gut sound. I would put my belly band on. It would keep everything tight. The next thing, a grabber. Let me tell you, you're not going to realize how much stuff falls in the floor that you're going to have to pick up until you can't pick it up. Everything falls in the floor. You're in the bed and you're trying to get the, the, the falls in the floor. And unless you want to keep bothering people, you're stuck. And the next thing that I'm going to show you, it was something that I purchased and I was hoping that I didn't need it. But on day one, when I went to lay in that bed and when I went to lay flat as I could, and my belly was being stretched to a point where I just could not take it anymore. I remember what they said, sleep elevated. This wedge converts and it becomes a wedge that you can sit on and you can also sleep on. And up until about three weeks ago, I was still sleeping on it. All of the things that are able to be bought on Amazon, I will place a link below so that you can check these things out. protect your peace. Only let people into this journey that absolutely need to be in it. Do not just talk about it willy-nilly because everyone has their opinion and you always have a hypochondriac that almost died or know somebody that almost died from this surgery. These are the people that you do not need in your headspace. This surgery is intense. It's intense emotionally, it is intense mentally, it is intense physically. The last thing you need is outside influences telling you anything negative. If you've gotten to the point where you scheduled this surgery, only thing that you need to do from that point on is just go forward. Just pack yourself with knowledge. Have your support system on lock. It is so essential to you getting back on your feet. You get so excited because you are doing so well that you want everyone to know. And since I'm a YouTuber, everything I do is online. So if I post a picture online, that's when I started to quickly learn that. I can't share everything with everyone too soon because then you start getting the feedback that you're not ready for. The feedback, oh Lynette, you're doing too much, be careful. And I know people mean well, but when you get all of that feedback and you're like, I'm not doing anything. I'm sitting on my couch taking a picture. I'm, I'm standing in my kitchen boiling an egg because you know that you're listening to your body. You know that you're listening to your doctor. You're not doing anything to harm yourself. I had to stop doing social media. I just had to chill and, and it was cool. It took a while for my energy to come back. It took a while for any of the swelling to start going down. And I am still quite swollen today at week six. I still have that. I can't do too much of one thing at one time. So if I'm sitting, I cannot sit in a setting and just sit there, sit there, sit there. I got to get up. I got to walk around a little bit. Then when you walk around and you do that a little bit, then you need to sit. So it's a constant rotation of not being able to do the same thing for a long duration of time. You can I could not take a shower every day. Taking a shower every day was exhausting. I would take a shower and I would have to get in the bed and go to sleep. It would wipe me out. So what I learned to start doing was take my shower. Then the next day, take a bird bath. Start taking your vitamins. Let's go ahead and get that stuff back into your system as soon as possible because it will help aid you in your energy. Most people say that they start to feel a little human around day four. I can kind of agree with that. After day three, I felt like 
I had this in the bag. After day three, I felt like I didn't need any more medication. Until week three, and it was so confusing. After week two, I started to feel sore again, like day one, day two soreness. Around week three, I felt like I could not manage without dulling the soreness a little bit. So I would have to take a couple of these Tylenols and it was so confusing to me because in my mind, once I'm out of the soreness and out of the pain, how did I go back when I didn't do anything to get back there? You know what I'm saying? And what you have to realize is even though your body is progressing in a way, there are some ways it hasn't even begun the process yet. So whatever my body started doing at week three, it kind of started the soreness all over again for me. Not to a point where I felt like, oh my God, I'm going to be in the bed. I got to lay down. I need to be waited on hand and foot. But definitely to a point where I needed some things to aid me at week six. Maybe five and a half, week six. I'm starting to have the incision nerve pain. Because until now, it's been kind of numb. It's felt pretty numb. Because although I feel good, I am still constantly reminded that I've had something done. My body will let me know in little ways. You, you just had something major done to it. I still am not able to wear jeans. I cannot wear anything that has a buckle or have any restriction around my stomach. It is very uncomfortable. Not painful, just very uncomfortable. Your life is going to be sweats, stretch pants, yoga pants, t-shirts, until indefinitely. Because I still have both of my ovaries, I have not felt any different. But I will say what is a mind trick. When you have your period, because everything still functions the same, you just don't bleed. You still get the mood swings, you get the cravings, the onset bloating, and it's really a mind book. No, I don't regret it at all. Oh, recovery has been a dream for me. I could not ask for a better recovery. I just wish I had did it sooner. Years ago, I probably could have avoided the C-section cut. Years ago, I was scared. Six weeks ago, I was terrified. So with that said, you listen to your body. You listen to the advice of your gynecologist, your doctor, and you do what's best for you. Relax. Just relax. If you can, you be off work as long as you possibly can. Is it different? Mm-hmm. 